In this corncast, we're going to use the zero product property. The zero product property is an extremely powerful tool in helping us solve quadratic equations. It uses the fact that if you multiply something by zero, the result will be zero. For example, if we let a equal zero, we know that zero times b is going to give us zero. Or, if we let b equal zero, a times zero will also give us zero. Please note that this property states that at least one of the factors must be zero. It is also possible for all the factors to be zero. Zero times zero is zero. This simple statement gives us a powerful result which is most often used with equations involving the product of binomials. Let's take a look at an example. In example one, we're going to solve the following equation for x. Now if you recall from the zero product property, we know that at least one of these factors must equal zero in order for this product to equal zero. So in order to use the zero product property, a couple of conditions need to be met. For example, is the equation equal to zero? And this equation is equal to zero, so that condition is met. The second thing we need to consider is that is there a product in this equation? And sure enough, there's a product in between the two factors. So now that those conditions have been met, we now can use the zero product property to solve this equation for x. Now again, these factors must equal zero in order for this to be a true statement. Now if you think to yourself, what could I substitute in for x in order to get a zero for this factor? Well, you're thinking to yourself, probably negative five. Negative five plus five is zero. Zero times whatever is going to give us zero. Now let's take a look at this algebraically. What we want to do is we want to set this factor equal to zero. By setting this factor equal to zero, we can now use our algebraic skills to solve for x. By subtracting five from both sides, we will get x is equal to negative five. And this is what we thought this should be in order to make this factor zero. Well, if we substitute negative five in for this factor right here, so negative five plus five is zero, negative five minus two is negative seven, does that equal zero? Well, zero times negative seven is zero, and indeed we get a true statement. Now let's bring our attention to the second factor. If we substitute a two into this part of the factor, two minus two is going to give us zero, which would make this factor zero, which would give us our true statement. Well again, let's look at this algebraically. Setting the factor equal to zero, solving for x, add two to both sides, and we're left with x is equal to two, which is what we thought it should be. And again, substituting this value in to our equation, so two plus five is seven, two minus two is zero, and does that product equal zero? Well, sure enough, seven times zero is zero, and again, we get a true statement. So the zero product property is a useful tool for solving equations when the equation is equal to zero and we have a product. In example two, we're going to solve the following equation for x, and again, we're going to use the zero product property. Now again, we have to meet the criteria of the zero product property. It has to be equal to zero, which this equation is, and we have to have a product. Well, if you notice on the left-hand side of this equation, there is no product. So in order to get a product, we have to factor the left-hand side of this equation. I notice that both terms share an x, so I'm going to go ahead and factor out a greatest common term, x. 
when I factor an x out of x squared, I'm left with x. And when I factor an x out of negative 4x, I'm left with negative 4. Now after I factor, I now have my product. And now I can use the zero product property. And finally, in order for the zero product property to work, the factors must equal zero in order for the product to equal zero. So my first factor, x equals zero. Now if you notice, x is already by itself, so I have already solved for my first x. x equals zero. Now for my second factor, I know that it too must equal zero. So x minus four is equal to zero. And then I go ahead and add four to both sides, and we get x is equal to four, which is my second solution for this particular equation. In example three, we're going to solve this following equation for x using the zero product property. Now the first criteria that needs to be met is that this equation needs to equal zero, which it obviously doesn't. So what we want to do is we want to get all the terms onto one side of the equal sign. So this is easily done by subtracting three to both sides of the equation. So that leaves us with two x squared minus five x minus three is equal to zero. And now we've satisfied our first criteria. The second criteria we need to meet is that there needs to be a product. And our equation does not yet have a product. So we're going to have to factor the left-hand side of this equation in order to get the product. Now I'm going to use the factoring using the area model method. So two times negative three is negative six. Factors of negative six that add to negative five are negative six and a positive one. Now I'm going to draw my generic rectangle. My first term, which is a 2x squared. My last term, which is a negative 3. Negative 5x can be rewritten as negative 6x plus 1x. The greatest common term that factors out of my bottom row is a negative 3. The greatest common term that factors out of my top row is an x. The greatest common term that factors out of my left column is a 2x. And the greatest common term that factors out of my right column is a positive 1. So 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 factors into 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. And again, that's equal to zero. I now have successfully completed my second requirement. So now I can use the zero product property to solve this equation. Now to use the zero product property to solve. So setting my first factor equal to zero. So 2x plus 1 is equal to zero. To solve for x, I'm going to subtract 1, which gives me 2x is equal to negative 1, and now to divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to negative 1 half. And there's one solution for this quadratic equation. Finally, setting my last factor equal to 0. So x minus 3 is equal to 0. So now in order to solve for x, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. and my other solution for this particular equation is going to be x is equal to 3. So the solutions for this particular quadratic equation are x equals negative 1 half or x equals 3. And again, those are the values that if I plug into these factors right here are going to result in a 0 times some quantity which has to equal 0 in order for the 0 prime property to work. Now that we have demonstrated how the zero product property can help us solve quadratic equations, let us bring our attention to the graphs. The zero product property can also be used to find where the quadratic crosses the x-axis. We call these points the x-intercepts. In other words, the zero product property is really a two for one. Not only does it help us solve for x, 
but it also helps us find the x-intercepts, and that's pretty cool. Now let's take a look at an example of this. In example four, we're going to find the x-intercepts for this following equation. Now one of the things that you really have to remember about the x-intercepts is that the y value always has to equal zero. So what we're going to do in this particular equation, and this is one of the nice things about algebra, is that we're going to let y equal zero. So we're going to substitute zero in for y. So we're going to get zero is equal to 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Now if you notice, this is the exact same equation that we had in example 3. So if you remember, 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 factors into 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. And when we solve for x in example 3, we got x is equal to negative 1 half or x is equal to 3. Now this is the nice thing about the zero product property. Like I said before, this is a 2 for 1. Not only did it enable us to solve for x, but since we let y equal 0, we also found the x-intercept. So our x value of negative 1 half and our y is 0. So our ordered pair for our first x-intercept is going to be negative 1 half comma 0. Now our second ordered pair for our x-intercept is going to be 3, 0. And so those are the values for my x-intercepts for this particular equation. In example 5, we're going to use the zero product property backwards to find an equation for the following graph. Now don't worry, we're going to take a look at how to find the equation in future corn casts. But for right now, I just kind of want to get the hang of things. Now, we know that we're going to start with y equals. Now, by observation, I can take a look at my graph, and I notice that it crosses the x-axis in two places. Once here at negative 3, and another time here at positive 1. Now, since my graph crosses the x-axis in two places, I know that my equation is going to have two factors. Now our goal is to figure out what we're going to put inside our factors. To do this, let's use our observations that we made in our previous examples. Well, what we observed was that our factors ended up giving our x-intercepts. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our x-intercepts to give us our factors. So our x-intercepts are going to be 1, 0 and negative 3, 0. Hopefully, one of the things that you observed was that in order to find the solution or the x-intercept, we just merely needed to change the sign for our factors. For example, one of our factors would have been x minus 1 in order to get x equals 1 as one of our solutions. Now, our other factor would have had to have been x plus 3. Because again, we would have changed the sign to get our solution of x equals negative 3. Finally, an equation for this particular graph would be y equals our first factor, x minus 1, times our second factor, x plus 3. And that would be our answer for this particular example. And that's how the zero product property is very useful.